Welcome back. We are moving into the last topic in this whole war. Plate tectonics, the boundaries, what happens at the boundaries, and the last thing we need to talk about are these big guys. Yes, the mountains. And there are basically four different kinds of mountains here that we're gonna be looking at. Volcanic upwarped fault block and fold them. So what are we seeing here? What we see here is a geomorphic picture of the United States, which basically shows you all the vegetation stripped off the United States and only shows the mountain chains. So you can see definitely in the middle of the country, there ain't any mountains. Well, there's a little plateau region there in the center, but other than that, there really isn't anything to look at. And over where we live in Pennsylvania, we are dealing with a mountain range, and definitely over in the west, there are a lot of different mountain ranges over there. So the question is, where are we going to find each of these types of mountain ranges across the United States? And three of them are kind of predominant in the United States. Uh, one of them where we live in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, you can see them kind of bending and flowing down from uh, New York and into the southern states. And those are folded mountains. Specifically, these are the Appalachian Mountains. And what do you have in the west? In the west, most of the west is made up of a lot of fault block mountains, especially the Rocky Mountains. But if you get further in the northwest, you start to run into volcanic. I thought the Rocky Mountains would be a little rockier. In folded mountains, rocks can actually physically be folded by horizontal compressions, meaning that if you're more towards a convergent type boundary, or you have pieces of rock pushing together, you can actually get the rock to physically warp instead of actually break. Yeah, and so they're basically like pushing a piece of paper from either end, they fold over. And that also shows uh, the warping up close of folded mountains, uh, they can bend a lot. And this means we've got pressure coming from both sides, squeezing that rock and warping it into the shape we're seeing. Fault block mountains, basically, you can tell them, if you can look at them from a distance, they all have this sort of lean to them. And basically the reason for that is because when you get compression from both sides, they actually break the rock, and that causes one side of the rock to rise up at an angle. So does it have to be compression, or could it be pulling apart? It could be. There so, are different kinds of uh, faults as well. So for fault block mountains, it could be caused from conversion plate boundaries or diversion plate boundaries. In this picture, you can definitely see it's kind of leaning to the left that fault block mountains exhibit. Plate tectonics, the convergence, divergence can fold mountains or because of the cracks and rocks, we can get fault block. But where are most of the mountains coming from? All over the world, you get these mountains caused by magma rising up underneath and escaping the earth. Uh, and we and see the majority of them happen in a specific place that we call the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is pretty much the outer edge of the Pacific Plate. Because everywhere along that edge, every red dot there is a volcano. Right, caused by uh, what we talked about before, the convergent boundaries converging all around the Pacific Ocean. And creating islands like the island of Japan or the islands off of Alaska. So what really drives a volcano here is lava. Did I say that wrong? Magma, when it's underneath, and when it escapes, it's called lava. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's molten rock. We've it got is. molten rock, minerals, gases, all mixed together. Depending on the pressures and different water that's mixed into that molten rock, you get different types of magma. We've got three types specifically. And we have basaltic, which is very dark, contains a lot of metal, which makes it more runny kind of magma, so it allows the lava to flow very quickly. And when things are running, we say they have low viscosity. That's correct. At the other end of the spectrum, you have rhyolitic, which is very light in color, contains a lot of silica. Silica makes the magma have a higher viscosity. And it flows like what? It doesn't flow very fast at all. So what does it flow like? Molasses? And with more of those gases mixed in, that creates more explosive magma than just the basaltic. Right, and the reason for that explosiveness in one rather than the other is because in one case you get a build up because of the slow movement of the magma, and in the other case you get the build out because of the fast movement of the magma. So when the magma finally reaches the surface, then we call. So we let you play around in class with the Volcano Explorer here. We got to see the Ring of Fire with this animation showing you where all the volcanoes were. A couple tabs that you could click on here was the types of volcanoes and you could click on the different types in terms of strato, 
cinder cone volcanoes, shield volcanoes, but they're all basically based off of what type of magma you have. So we let you build your own volcanoes. Down here was viscosity. You can go from the low viscosity, which says runs and flows very smoothly, to when I raise it to high viscosity, you can see how slow that magma flows. High gas versus low gas just means how much dissolved minerals and carbon dioxide might be mixed in that magma. If I picked on low viscosity, low gas, let's see what kind of volcano we create. So what are we seeing here? We are seeing a very fast moving lava and it's not very explosive. There wasn't much of a gas buildup. So the magma flowing outwards, if this was an island with magma flowing outwards, it would spill out in a broad shape. So we call these shield volcanoes. Yes, we do. Because they look like a broad shield. So here we went a little more viscous and we've created what we call a cinder cone now. It's a little more explosive, but not terribly. Most of the material is being shot up this time, so what goes up must come down. Yeah. You get the cone shape and you get the magma to build up into this typical volcanic shape that you're used to. And here, we don't really have big eruptions in a dome volcano. You get that building up of a magma chamber deep in the earth, and that magma chamber can cause the land above it to swell up. So one of the term, our mountains we didn't talk about was an upwarp mountain, and that would be from this magma pressure deep down in the earth. As has been told to me, basically a volcano that the magma has not come out. So let's go with the highest viscosity, and now we're still dealing with that dome volcano, but with high viscosity, created this very, very fast flow here, which we call a pyroclastic flow. Basically it's a, a huge amount of superheated material that's flowing down the side of the mountain. It can go really fast and it's very deadly. You'd breathe those in. And melt your lungs. So not a good situation. Get out of the way of a pyroclastic flow. So I'm going to switch up gears one more time. Low viscosity, high gas, and let's see what we get. And it looks like we have our shield volcano again. But now with the high gases, it's, it's more explosive. And so let's go to the extreme here. Really slow moving magma with lots of gas mixed in between. Which you would expect to be the most explosive situation. So this is a strata volcano with lots of things occurring. When this blows, you can get landslides, you can get the pyroclastic flows, you will get ash clouds pouring into the space, you can get lava flows down the mountain, so this is not a good situation to be in. These are the kind of volcanoes you see in all the Hollywood movies. They're the ones that are the most exciting as well as the most deadly. To watch from afar. Yes. Now the lahar is one thing that we didn't talk about in any of the volcanoes here. But the lahar is really a mixture of melting snow mixed with all that ash and debris. So when the magma chamber is filling and heating up, it actually melts all that ice and snow from glaciers that might have formed on the mountain. So they have snow at the top and that snow can melt and mix and create a really dangerous mudslide. This cut kind of completes all of our topics for plate tectonics. The boundaries, the effects at each boundary, and what's created. Let's move on to something else.